Election 2024 is in full swing. As early voting gets underway across Texas, where and how you can cast your ballot. Halloween is fast approaching, and this fall season, one local haunted house is taking spooky to the next level, all for a good cause. It's a dreaded time of year for college students, midterms. See how one group of UT students is finding some relief. Reporting Texas TV starts now. Good evening, I'm Logan Dubolt. And I'm Gracie Kirchner. Election season is officially here. Early voting kicked off across Texas this week. And UT was buzzing with energy. Live in the studio, Evelyn Martinez tells us more about on-campus early voting. According to the Travis County Clerk's Office, Monday's early voting turnout broke city records. Here on campus, our two polling locations have counted over 4,000 ballots in the first three days. This election is the first time voters can cast a ballot at the Union. It used to be at the FAC. Yesterday afternoon, I saw the line go past the building doors as many students prepared to cast their ballot for the very first time. For a lot of us, this is our first time voting for a president, and I think it's exciting and people should be excited that they get to go out there and vote. It's a good habit to form when you're young, so you keep going out there to vote every, every four years. And advocates say voters should plan ahead by checking wait times online and looking at a sample ballot before heading to the polls. The union will remain open until 10 p.m. on the final day of early voting, and both campus locations will reopen for the general election on November 5th. Live in studio, Evelyn Martinez, Reporting Texas TV. Thank you so much, Evelyn. As early voting begins in Austin, local businesses are offering sweet incentives for voters. Kirby Lane Cafe gives a free pancake to those sporting an I Voted sticker, while Home Slice Pizza trades stickers for free pizza. The Soup Peddler offers a free cup of soup, and Easy Tiger gives out free beer on Election Day. Plus, Uber and Lyft are offering discounted rides to polling locations. So, cast your ballot early and enjoy some local perks for making your voice heard. Former President Donald Trump is stopping in Austin on Friday for an interview with Joe Rogan. This will be Trump's first appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience, one of the most popular podcasts in the world. Trump criticized Rogan earlier this year for expressing support for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Rogan clarified later that he did not endorse RFK, who later dropped out of the race. Meantime, Vice President Kamala Harris will also be in Texas on Friday. Polling in the University of Houston new poll shows Trump leading in the state by five points. Harris will hold a rally in Houston to talk about reproductive rights. The rally might draw attention to the Texas Senate race between Ted Cruz and his Democratic challenger, Colin Allred. If Allred wins the seat, it could lead to a Democratic Senate majority. Well, October is a month full of spooks and scaries with lots of Halloween events all around town. Our Itza Martinez checked out a haunted adventure right in Maynard, Texas, and that's going above and beyond this season. Itza's live in the newsroom to tell us all about it. Itza? That is right, you guys. I had the chance to get a behind-the-scenes look at Scare for a Cure's haunted house and saw how the volunteers pull off these scares every season. Eerie creaks and screams of terror fill the rooms of Scare for a Cure's haunted house. This type of spook house is a little bit unique and it kind of was birthed here in Austin. Keith Ewing is one of the visionaries behind this year's theme, Nightmares of a Legend, and is known as one of the city's most extreme and interactive adventures. Our actors um, converse with them, interact with them. Um, make them part of the story. These actors are proving that scaring is caring. Behind all of this is Scare for a Cure, a nonprofit that has raised over $500,000 since 2007 toward the Breast Cancer Resource Center. The center exists mainly online. However, their mission spreads far beyond laptop screens, empowering those who have been affected by a breast cancer diagnosis. Volunteers are the backbone of Scare for a Cure and are the reason the haunt exists annually. We we have a volunteer who is, you know, a male volunteer dealing with a type of cancer. But, you know, he goes and gets his chemo, all, but he comes out and does his work because it's that important to him. The center helps both men and women who are battling breast cancer. Doctors call it a vital resource in uncertain times. There's always going to be several weeks between finding out that you have cancer and starting treatment, and that's okay, and that's actually better 
then rushing into treatment. As a nonprofit, the center relies on donations so they can connect patients with survivors. I want them to have that there are people that don't know them, that they'll never meet, that have their back. Scare for a Cure is wrapping up their season this weekend, and you can check them out tonight through Saturday. And for a warning, the tickets are going fast. The organization is lo always looking for volunteers to get involved to take down the build and next year. You can find the link to this event in my story at reportingtexas.com. Thanks, Yitza. Texas Athletics was fined $250,000 after the student section threw water bottles on the field in a football game against Georgia. Texas fans were upset with a holding call that was later reversed. The SEC also required the university to identify students responsible for the acts and to revoke their big ticket privileges for the remainder of the school year. University President Jay Hartzell released a statement condemning Saturday's conduct. This is only the Longhorns' third game in the SEC, and Hartzell sent an email emphasizing how these actions could tarnish the university's reputation in the conference and nationwide. Hartzell recognized the frustration and passion from Texas fans, but said their reaction went too far. That SEC matchup wasn't the only place where things got out of hand this weekend. Things also got wild at the Circuit of the Americas after the Grand Prix fans rushed the racetrack during that race, leading to a fine of over half a million dollars. The track is now facing a hefty fine after a security breach on Sunday that risked the safety for the drivers and fans alike. Organizers are working on ensuring that this does not happen for future events. And coming up right here next, the Austin City Limits Music Festival may be wrapped up for the year, but that's not stopping music fans from coming to town. We'll show you why. And the bottles thrown on the field weren't the only downside to Saturday's game. We'll break down the Longhorns' first loss of the season later in sports. Email from school. What about the incident today? Scary. Tell me about it. Did you have any idea that was going on? None. I mean, you saw Derek at the game last night, too. Did you have a clue? No, but you know, teachers like me, parents, we don't always know as much as you guys do. Kids hear first about what's going on with other kids. Half the time, it's rumors. It can be hard to tell sometimes, but if you're ever concerned about a friend who's having trouble with alcohol, prescription drugs, bullying, violence, anything, you need to tell an adult. Mom or me, a teacher, coach, school counselor, someone you know and trust. Dad, no kid is going to tell an adult about that kind of stuff. I get it, but if we don't know, we can't help. Speaking up about a problem, that's what helping a friend is all about. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is vaping? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. You, you, you even turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you have to get it trending. Right, backpack kid? Let's do it. First, invite your kid to do the vape talk. Let's try this. All right. Why is he here? Yeah, I got to get it trending, no. honey. Come on. Honey, can we talk? Yeah, what's up? I see a lot of your friends vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. The Austin Film Festival starts today, showcasing a variety of films, documentaries, and panels. This year, UT alum Christopher Yates has a world premiere for his film, American Spirit. The film follows the story of old high school lovers meeting unexpectedly once again only to end up discussing what went wrong in their relationship in the first place. To watch the film and other works, visit the Austin Film Festival website for the complete schedule. 
Music collectors came together for the largest recorded music sale in the U.S. The Austin Record Convention was held at the Palmer Events Center this past weekend. The event started back in 1981, marking their 43rd year of creating a space for music lovers. Over 300 dealers and buyers from all over the world came out to trade their music. Yeah, we have international shoppers from Japan, from Europe. Um, you know, I was just talking to some guys from Tokyo that came. They come every show. We've got some international shoppers from uh, Germany that I was just chatting with. So, The event is held twice a year. If you're interested in attending, their next event is May 3rd through the 5th. F1 weekend continues to break records at the Austin Bergstrom International Airport. The Monday after Formula One, broke the record for the highest number of passengers for the past two years. This year, there have been 20,000 more travelers than the same time last year. Austin's oldest institution of higher education is making plans to expand beyond Central Texas and even into California. Huston Tillotson University, a historically black college, is set to become California's first HBCU. Initially, the university will offer liberal studies courses online starting in January with hopes to break ground on the physical campus by August pending approval. Crews finished repairing an 8-inch gas line leak that disrupted businesses and schools since Friday. A construction crew hit a gas line at Ranch to Market 620 and 2222 Friday. Texas Gas Service and Lake Travis fire crews closed roads in the area to repair the line. Businesses nearby saw fewer customers due to the closures. So we had no traffic in here whatsoever, none in here on Friday, none in here on Saturday. Um, they opened up one lane for us on Sunday, but it was majority blocked off, so we couldn't really get anybody in here. And businesses weren't the only things affected. Leander ISD closed some schools Monday and excused absences for students that live in the area because of heavy traffic delays from road closures. The Texas Department of Transportation says all lanes reopened Monday. Costco has issued multiple recalls over the past week due to a potential listeria contamination. The recalls started after the CDC identified listeria in chicken products supplied by a food processing company named Bruce Pack. The contaminated chicken was used in several Costco products. Customers can check the Costco website for a full list of all the recalled items and return them for a refund. A tobacco company is testing a new product in Austin, aimed at helping smokers quit cigarettes. It's called ICUS. It's a smokeless way to consume nicotine. The product heats tobacco rather than burning it. The Philip Morris International Company claims this method reduces the intake of harmful chemicals, although health risks do remain. This product is not yet available to the public. Despite the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates last month, mortgage rates are continuing to rise. This is driven largely by the 10-year Treasury bonds. That sets the pace for mortgage rates, and with fewer homes for sale and buyers pulling back due to high costs, the housing market is at a standstill. Experts say it doesn't look like those rates will be dropping anytime soon. And coming up next year, spooky season is here, but the Texas temperatures haven't quite caught up yet. More on these sunny skies that are still ahead when we talk weather. Plus, the long-running tradition continues this weekend as Austin celebrates Day of the Dead. How you can join in on the festivities later. Because I think I lived in a house where I saw how deeply it affected everyone in the house. And just how much everyone defined themselves by the music they listened to. Music as a framework, I think, gave my parents my identity from, from a young age. You can like any music that you want if it makes you feel happy. And uh, now when I hear certain songs, I think of them, and I think of them in their happiest state, and it makes me happy. If they seem like they're having trouble talking about something, I try to tell them about a time when I felt something similar. Whatever the issue was, we would tell them the pros and cons and how important it was and that they had come to us because we could always help them. I think the real important point, we always told them, no matter what you do, no matter what happens, we will help you through it no matter what it is. Being the new face of Don't Mess With Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. Everybody loves me here. I can't wait to go home.
I just want to help keep Texas clean and maybe spice some things up around here. I'll never litter, Joe. Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Hand washing is one of the best ways to stay Wash healthy all year long. Alrighty, Kashmir. Well, it looks like Texas is unfortunately heating up again. I've been enjoying this Texas-style sweater weather, but looks like that's not here to stay. Yeah, the return of the hot temperatures are back, which is unfortunate because I was just starting to wear my sweatpants. That's Texas weather for you. The heat is creeping back up, and the cold weather is not here to stay as of right now. All right, it was a cloudy start to the day, but don't let that fool you. The sun still managed to beat down through the clouds, bringing the heat to campus. All righty, today we're looking at mostly sunny skies with temperatures sitting at a hot 91 degrees. The humidity is around 38%, so even with some cloud cover earlier, it's been a warm one out here today. There's a 5% chance of rain, so I really wouldn't worry too much about bringing out an umbrella. And if you're still out and about this evening, expect a low of 65 degrees with calm winds just to cool things down a little bit. Tomorrow, we're expecting a high of 90 degrees and a low of 66 with humidity sitting around 44%. There will be some morning clouds, but it should clear up later in the afternoon, and there is just a small chance of rain at just 5%. On Saturday, we are looking at morning clouds giving way to plenty of sunshine with a high of 90 degrees and a low of 66. Sunday will also be sunny with a high of 90 and a low of 63, making it a great day to get out and soak up that Texas sunshine. As for next week, expect similar conditions. We're also looking at highs in the upper 80s to low 90s with lows in the mid 60s. There's only a slight chance of rain next week. We'll be sure not to forget our sunscreen. I'm sure it's probably the sun still beating down. Right, those UV rays are still out so make sure to wear your sunscreen and protect yourself. Alrighty, and coming up next here in sports, while UT couldn't bring in a victory against Georgia on the football field, the Longhorns still dominated on the volleyball court. How those players were able to rally against Georgia. Midterms can be a very stressful time here on campus, and some UT students have an unconventional way of coping. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. Crippling depression, anxiety, exhaustion. I was in prison and my mom had a heart attack. There's a lot of institutional issues and challenges that suggest to us that dads aren't essential, and I've always rejected that. Sometimes you don't have to know everything about being a dad. You just got to be there. So far, a place that I call home. I'm teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. <laughs> Thank you. Study, please. I think I 
finally found a place to make my own. A place that I call home. And this place that I call home. Welcome to this week's sports update. I'm Tori Garcia. We'll start with women's soccer. In a back and forth matchup, the number five Arkansas Razorbacks nearly pulled off a win against number 25, 24 Texas Longhorns on Friday. The Horns came out hot, finding the back of the net first, not even six and a half minutes into the game. But the Razorbacks ultimately finished the job and defeated the Longhorns four to three. A little over a week ago, senior midfielder Lexi Missimo set a new record for career goals with 53. She tallied one more against Arkansas, which inched her even closer to the 60 goal, 60 assist club. 60 assist, I mean that speaks for itself, right? Uh, she's even a little nicked up, you know, nobody knows about that, but, um, and she's grinding, right? And the, the, goal, the goal was world class and the assist, uh, to get 60 assists on your careers is exceptional. With at least one point in six consecutive matches, Missimo is now tied for the seventh longest streak in program history. The Razorbacks are not the only top five team the Longhorns faced this weekend, and what could have possibly prepared fans more for the primetime Texas versus Georgia Bulldogs game than bringing college game day to the 40 acres. Some football fans made their way to the tower before the sun came up on Saturday morning to watch Pat McAfee, Nick Saban, and other ESPN personalities live. The broadcast ran from 8 to 11 a.m., and around wrap-up time for the show, each announcer made their college game day predictions. Every announcer projected the Longhorns to win, and every single one of them were wrong. Texas football dropped from number one in the AP polls to number five after losing to the Bulldogs. The game got out of hand early on Saturday night at DKR Stadium for the Longhorns. Not only did backup quarterback Arch Manning replace Quinn Ewers at the end of the second quarter, but Texas entered the locker room at halftime, trailing 23-0. Ewers ultimately returned for the entirety of the second half and finished 25-43 of 43 passing for 211 yards with two touchdowns and one interception. Despite the minor comeback and bottle throwing fiasco from the student section, the Horns lost their first game of the season 30 to 15. But while one Texas team lost the dogs, another put them in a cage. Texas volleyball defeated Georgia 3 to 1 on Sunday. Redshirt sophomore and middle blocker Mariana Singletary was key to the Longhorn success and had a career high game with 11 blocks. Singletary credits her teammates for her continued improvement this season. I think that just goes to show how hard our team works. It's always about next play, next next moment to score, play long game, long rally. Just taking it one point at a time and trusting each other and building confidence in that. The Longhorns lost their first SEC game of the season on Wednesday to rival Texas A&M and will now have a long break until their next matchup on November 1st. We'll be right back. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. Those nine months were also 273 days of planning. What about your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. And let's not forget those barbecues you plan in detail for your family and your more vegetarian by the day best friends. That surprise party for your parents' golden anniversary? You get the golden planning. The same way you plan each detail for those moments. Start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? 
Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Midterm season is in full swing at the University of Texas. As projects and exams pile up, many students are looking for ways to blow off some steam. Our Kevin Myers is live in the newsroom. And Kevin, you explored one of those options right here on campus. Tell us about it. That's right. The stress from all the work that piles up this time in the semester can take a toll on students' mental health. One organization is offering a bit of an unconventional take on a study break and connecting students along the way. Video games aren't just a way to unwind and enjoy life. Students are now turning to gaming as a reprieve from the rigors of college life. During the school year, I, I don't actually play much games, but like most of my life, that was like my main source reliever. Brat Dercio attended video game day at the Latinx Pop Lab in Patton Hall. The event is built as a space for students to take a break from their studies, play games, and connect with others. As soon as I got here, I got it. I said hi and it, it felt inviting. The Latinx Pop Lab is a UT program that promotes the work of Latinx people in the arts. Video Game Day is one of many events to help students with their stress. I think having this type of uh, open forum where people can come by for as long as they're able to, it's a, a really cool way to showcase the affordances that games have. As exams and projects pile up, Experts say it's important to reach out for help. Students have a lot that they're balancing. You're not alone and know that you're, you're not alone. The UT Counseling and Mental Health Center provides an array of services to students. In fact, a recent report found nearly half of CMHC students were seeking help with academic stress during the 2022 school year. For some students, though, help with stress can be as simple as connecting with people through a shared interest, like gaming. It just allows you to expand and be yourself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The Latinx Pop Lab also hosts an unplugged series in Patton Hall on Thursday evenings, offering students a break from tech addiction. Live in the newsroom, Kevin Myers reporting Texas TV. Thank you, Kevin. Austin's biggest Dia de los Muertos celebration is back. The Mexicarte Museum's 41st Viva la Vida Festival and Parade returns this Saturday at 4th Street and Congress. The festivities kick off at noon with the grand procession until 6 p.m. You can expect live music, traditional food, local artists, and even a lowrider show. You can come on to celebrate and honor those who've passed. Alrighty, it is still hot here in Austin. Horns go to Nashville. Thanks for joining us tonight on Reporting Texas TV. If you'd like to check out any of our stories or our newscasts, please visit ReportingTexas.com. We'll see you next Thursday. Good night.